Welcome back. Uh, it's been a little while. So I had COVID and I believe that I've pretty much fully recovered. Um, but during that time, you know, I had zero energy. I didn't want to do anything. So I took a bit of a break and I'm back. As you saw in the title of this video, it is going to be all about wheels and tires. Now, I don't think that there is something that can change the look of a vehicle as much as wheels and tires can. Uh, other than like the body, of course. But I think that the wrong wheels and tires on a crawler, on a scale rig, on a whatever it may be, can make or break it, you know? And so I agonize way more than I should over what wheels and tires I'm gonna run. So for the 10.2 the project, I know it, when I last worked on it, I just finished building the kit and it was a little bit up in the air. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to build with the kit. And since then I have decided, and I'm gonna keep it a little bit of a secret. Uh, I'm gonna keep you in suspense. And so I figured I'm gonna work from the ground up. So for the tires, I went with the RC four wheel drive, uh, BF Goodrich Mud Terrain KM threes with some generic uh, plastic beadlock wheels. And I know this might seem like a bit of a shock. I know there's some people thinking like, what, what am, what am I thinking? And I'll tell you. So this is a four inch tire, which the scale that I'm working on is, works out to be about a 36 to a 37 inch tire, which is perfect. It's the exact tire size that I'm looking for. The tread pattern is perfect. It's super scale. It's a nice skinny tire. I don't like the tires that are really wide and kind of look like big pillows and everything. So this is a nice skinny, aggressive tire. It's got all of the lettering on the sidewall. This is one of the most scale tires, in my opinion, that you can get. Now, the wheels, <laughs> this is where I struggled for a long time. I spent literally hours browsing eBay, Amazon, A-Main Hobbies, RPP Hobby, SSD, Vanquish, everything, looking for the perfect wheel and tire package. And this is what I settled on for now. This may end up changing in the future, but for now, this is exactly what I'm looking for. The reason I went with these, uh, twofold. Number one, they're like 15 bucks a set, like for four. They're like 15 bucks for four. So like dirt cheap, which is amazing right now. But number two, RC four wheel drive uses a really distinct um, bead for their tires and not all wheels work with their tires. So before this, I had a set of Injora bead locks that I was really happy with but I could not get these tires to fit on the Enjora beadlocks. I did some more digging and I came up with these and these work perfectly with RC four wheel drive tires. I love the simple design. I did not want to have a, a visible beadlock ring for this project. Um, I feel like you see them everywhere. I mean, I have a set right here in front of me. Uh, these are on my Cherokee with that beadlock ring. I think for some trucks it works really well, uh, not for this one. So I want this to be like my other 10.2 videos where there's very minimal editing uh, going on. I kind of have this idea of building this truck from, well, from the kit, from just parts into a complete running rig and taking you along for the entire journey. I don't want to skip over things, you know, within reason. Um, and so I really want you know, if somebody's interested, I want them to see what it goes from a pile of parts to a running rig uh, every step along the way. And which is why in this video, we're gonna take the three remaining wheels and put them on these tires. I already did one already just to make sure they work because like I said, I ran into issues with these tires and wheels before, but I have these other wheels right here in front of me and we are gonna put them together. And these, um, the way these work, so they have an inner ring, just like all beadlock wheels, uh, and they're actually slotted, and the outer face slots into those. I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but it slots into them, which holds them in place, and then the back piece comes in and sandwiches it together, and the back piece includes the hex that will, of course, go onto the axle. And then you run these screws through the sides into bolts that you put into the back, and then they also come with these, um, I don't know uh, what you would call these uh, nut covers. <laughs> that always sounds so gross. Uh, these bolt on the outside that cover, you know, the little, uh, the little lug nut. Um, makes them look a little bit more realistic. I might, I don't love how shiny these are. Um, I may decide to hit them with a coat of like flat clear or something. Um, 
but that's not, we're not gonna do that right now. I don't wanna do that right now because I don't feel like it. So we have one tire done, like I said, now we're gonna move on to the next one. Um, and when I have to do, I'm sure I've mentioned this, I know for a fact I mentioned this in, uh, in the build videos of the 10.2, but anytime I have to do a repetitive step, I like to do it all at once. So right now I'm gonna take all of these rings and put them into the tires. Uh, then I'm gonna take all of the front plate things and put them on and then all of the back ones. And um, I just find it works a lot faster that way. And with these tires, uh, it is an asymmetrical tread pattern, which means, well, I don't know if actually they are asymmetrical, but what it means is, so on one side, you have the tread kind of points in. Oh, this is definitely not focusing. Come on, come on. Well, that's not working. Anyway, so what it means on one side, on one tread, the tread kind of does this on a diagonal. Um, and so you can't really have like a left side and a right side. You know what I mean? We're like, <laughs> it's been a long day. Uh, basically what I'm trying to say is I don't have to worry about which side goes on the front and which side goes on the back. Um, Cause they're not gonna line up anyways. But now we have all of the rings in. Um, and it's the same lettering on either side as well. So now I just have to put the outer face on, or this outer plate, and it kind of keys in. I don't know, maybe you could hear that little snap. So there's one, so let's get this other one. Um, and like I said, I do want this to be kind of a, kind of a secret. Um, what I'm what what the final project will be. I want to keep you guys in a little bit of suspense uh, I don't know. I just feel like it's more fun that way and I'm hoping that You know some of my decisions along the way will make more sense once you see the final project um, So like why I'm going with a slightly smaller tire size and you know a non beadlock looking wheel um, I will say that I'm looking for more of a kind of a, a, a more street legal rig. I'm not really looking for a crazy modified looking truck at the end. So that's why, anyways, that's why I picked this, this wheel and tire combo. All right. And the important thing to do is make sure the bead is seated correctly. Because once you start clamping those nuts down, um, that's when you find out if the tire is going to look a little weird, but I think that one's good. Let's get this one next. Um, so yeah, COVID. I had COVID. It finally hit me. Uh, this is the first time I've had it. And it wasn't too bad. Mostly just felt like I had a bad cold. Um, oh, come on. So... Anyways, earlier I mentioned that the RC four-wheel drive beads are kind of weird as opposed to like Proline. And what I mean by that is they're just thicker. There's like an extra lip on the inside of the tire that isn't there on, the, on other brands like Proline. And so it, it is kind of hit or miss with RC four-wheel drive tires whether or not they'll fit on, uh, on the wheels. So... Okay, I think though, I think it's going to work for now. Okay, so I got to find one. This is like an extreme close up of my shoulder. Okay, there we go. So, one thing that's nice about these wheels is they come with these longer screws that are just absolutely critical to. Um, to building these and and it just allows you to kind of clamp the wheel down uh, get everything set up because these little screws are so short we're going to use the ugga dugga as kevin talbot says uh, these these other screws so these are the ones that you use to actually um, when like these are the the actual screws you you use to bolt the wheels together they're just so short 
that uh, it's really hard to like hold the wheel together. Um, and uh, and hold everything in place. So these longer screws just allow you to get everything started. And if you watch, I actually have a video on my channel um, from last year sometime. Um, RC4 will drive bead, some of their bead locks, like the steel wheels are the same way. If you use that longer screw, it just makes it so much easier. So you put in these longer screws on opposite ends of each other. It clamps the wheel down. It clamps the tire in place. So now you take these uh, little, I think these are like M2 and a half, but you take the nut, you put it on the back end, you take the screw, you put it on the front end, and very carefully, if you're going to be doing this, very carefully, um, if you're using this guy, uh, tighten it down because so on the back end these little nuts are just held into the back of this plastic wheel and so if you just crank on it uh, you will spin um, kind of like the hex of a, of a car in a plastic wheel with too much power that nut will just strip out the plastic and spin and then th th that's it you know um, especially because these are so cheap you know I really don't want to push my luck um, so all I'm doing is uh, getting them mostly tightened until I feel the slightest bit of resistance and then I will go back in by hand and tighten them all the way. But um, anyways, oh, I find myself when I'm doing these videos where I just build and talk. I really do just like <laughs> it's just rambling. All right, so now we have, you can kind of see the four silver screws and the two black ones. Now that these silver ones are in here, they're holding the wheel together. I can take the black ones out and swap them out for the shorter ones. Again, the black ones are just used for the initial assembly. Uh-oh. I think my battery died. But that one should be good. Put that off to the side. Yeah. No, we'll just do it by hand. It's not the end of the world. All right. Oh. Putting in the short one, again, very slowly. The plan is also, um, so it comes with those little um, nut covers. I don't know, there's probably a better word for them, these things. And I actually have some scale hardware, those like little lug nut things. Um, they're gonna go on the outside to hopefully make it look a little bit more realistic, but that tire is done and now we can move on to the next one so again uh, some of these already have a nut in the back but we'll just start to tighten that one up a little bit and you don't want to um, you don't want to tighten one end all the way and then go back and do the other end you kind of want to Tighten them at the same time, so like tighten one end a little bit, tighten the other end a little bit, um, just so it helps. Just so it kind of pulls evenly on the tire. All right. And I always like to check and make sure that the tire's like seated correctly or close enough. This one looks really good. So we can go ahead and get started, slap a little nut in the back. I'm not sure, honestly, if these need to be thread locked. Uh, maybe they should. My thought is because, um, because the wheels are pushing against the nut and bolt, that it's gonna keep it seated. But maybe I should use thread lock. I don't know. 
I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> you know, if it keeps me up one night, I'll come down here, I'll pull them apart. It's easily, it's easy enough. I'll pop some thread lock on. Um, but right now I am not going to worry about it because I already have two wheels done working on the third and I don't want to undo everything that I just did because I can't cut. Oh boy, there goes a nut. Good thing I got spares. Uh, let me get, let me know if you guys like these kind of long format videos. If you like watching these things, leave a comment down below. Let me know if anyone's still watching. <laughs> Not the most exciting video. Uh-oh. The other thing, if you're going to use it this way, you want to make sure you're not th cross-threading. You want to make sure those nuts are nice and flat when you thread them in. Um, but yeah, if you guys like these long format videos, I know I do sometimes when I'm, when I'm working on something, when I'm at the computer, I just want some noise on, some background noise. You know, it's nice to have a long video I can put on and um, just let it go in the background, you know? So that's kind of what these are for me. And so if this is something you like, let me know. If not, you can let me know that too. These videos don't typically get a lot of views for me. Um, I'm fine with that. Like I said, if, if somebody out there, you know, just a few people enjoy this, great. If not, I'm having a fun time doing it. And right now, that really is all that matters to me, <laughs> is that I'm enjoying it. All right, so there's three. And we got one more. So once again, this one does not have any uh, nuts in the back. This one, we can do a little better job seating. Okay. So we got to pop a nut in the back. And then... All right. If everything goes to plan with this build, uh, I'm, I'm really excited for the finished product. Because if everything goes to plan, it's going to be, hopefully, in my, in my mind at least, it's going to be such a cool, unique build. Um, I have not seen... I have not seen um, very many rigs like the one I'm about to build. Um, and the ones that I have seen are probably a lot better than I can build, in all honesty. <laughs> but, um, but I haven't seen very many driving videos of them. And I want to build something that is going to, number one, be cool in pictures, but also be really cool on camera. Um, and so I'm kind of, I'm, I'm building this to hopefully get really, really cool videos out of it. Um, I mean, that's the plan. Hopefully it comes out that way. Because, uh, you know, part of the, part of my, part of my decision process for like what truck I'm going to build this one is weird. Why are you weird? So I think this one is starting to strip out the plastic back there a little bit. So that one, I think we're just going to leave as it... Now, let's see if we can... All right. It's like this nut doesn't quite want to sit flat. All right. We're going to leave that one pretty loose and tighten that one by hand. Um, yeah, a lot of the decision, like what truck I want to build next, a lot of the decision right now is made by whether or not I think it'll look cool on video, which I don't know is that, if that's dumb or not. I mean, I'm also going to build a truck that I, that I want to build. I'm not going to build one that's like, oh, I have to build this one because it's what people want to see. All right, let's see if I can find that one I dropped. Ah, there it is. Um, so maybe that sounds bad. It's, it's not like I'm only going to build something if I think it looks good on camera. Um, but it doesn't help, or it doesn't, uh, 
it certainly goes into the decision making process. And this is a truck I was, um, you know, if you remember when I finished the 10.2, I was pretty undecided about what I wanted to build. And I had a few in mind, uh, a few that, I, that definitely would have looked great. And I finally settled on, uh, on this one after talking to some friends, you know, some of them helped me out with some parts. Uh, all right, so now by hand, I need you. Now we're just going to give them one last little tight. Make sure they're nice and good. And in this video, I will not be putting on the outer covers um, just because I am still working on the truck. And the way these wheels are built, um, and I'll show you one here in a second. So the way these are built, so you have your little, you know, um, hex in the back and the axle comes through here. You get your little M4 nut, you screw it on, whoops. And then you take your little cover and you bolt it on the outside using screws. And that means if you want to take your wheel and tire off, you have to undo the four screw, uh, six screws holding this on. And then you get to your M4 nut. And because this truck is a work in progress, and because these are plastic, I don't want to be screwing in and out all the time. That sounds dirty. Uh, just because it will damage the plastic every time, you know, you drive a screw in and then out and in and out. It, it, it damages the plastic. It's not like metal. So um, because the truck is a work in project, uh, progress, like I was saying. Um, all right. I don't want to finish them. Um, and put them on the truck and put all the screws on because I know I'm going to be taking them off to get to different things. But there we go. Uh, they are done. I think they look, uh, you know, for $15 wheels I got off of Amazon, plastic wheels, I think they look really good. They're the look I'm going for. They're nice and cheap, like I was saying. Um, again, I don't love the sheen, so I might, you know, I might tape, them, tape off the tires or something, put on a coat of clear matte. Uh, just to just to kill that fake plastic looking sheen a little bit, but they work with RC four-wheel drive tires Which we learned not all not all wheels do um, and They just have that look I'm going for they look like you know something you would see on your average 4x4 driving down the road not some extreme rock crawler and that's what this truck is gonna be so thank you very much for watching um, like I said if you like these videos where it's just me rambling while I'm doing something let me know leave me a comment like the video and subscribe um, I'm really trying to grow the channel and I've just noticed lately that progress has come to a standstill and every like comment and subscription really does help um, or not if you don't like these and you don't like me that's fine I get it I don't like me all the time either <laughs> but in any case thank you very much for watching uh, stay tuned for the next build in this series or the next video in this series uh, next will be suspension I believe and once again I'm gonna be going with a weird choice for suspension not that weird but weird so stay tuned keep an eye out for that one hopefully in the next few weeks um, I can get that made and uh, in the meantime here's the chassis again these are some uh, well we'll just get to that in the next video thank you for watching and we will see you around